Hello, it is I, Sarah of the Millican, and this is episode 70 of How to Be Champion Storytime Spectacular. Ta-da! <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yes, I know some of you be like, oh, she wears that top a lot. I'm just recording a bunch in a row because, <laughs> you know, it just makes sense. When I have a crappy day, I don't have to tell you about it. <laughs> I'm having a good day today, smiling. And I have it's not even because I've had a magnum. I haven't even had a magnum yet. Uh, episode 70 is starts with the chapter, My Love of Stationery. <gasps> stationery is stationery. I'm not daft. I know the A for envelope rule when spelling the word. What I mean is that for me, stationery is calmness, not constant. No matter what has been going on in my life, pads and pens always make me happy. They're a shortcut to joy. I'm sure other people are cheered by purchasing clothes and jewellery, but when I want to treat myself, I wander into a stationery shop and breathe out. Plus, I've never been too fat for a ring binder. In times of stress and success, I turn to buy rose pencil cases and in a weaker moment, some crayons. I've been in Paper Chase, Ryman, WH Smith, Staples and a little independent one near me where the old ladies on the counter use their brains to add up instead of tills to cheer me up on a rubbish day, celebrate good test results and because it's my birthday. It's like alcohol, but with more wonderment and possibility and less vomiting and ill-judged kissing. I once revisited the pubs I used to frequent as a 20-something with two old friends and was thrilled when I saw a member of the bar staff wandering around Kirkpatrick's South Shields classy pub but horrible Miss World staircase to the loo selling highlighters. I did think a little, it a little odd, but I hadn't been on a pub crawl in 10 years. Clearly this is what they do now. Turns out they were illuminous shots of booze. I glanced around expecting to see lots of similarly disappointed faces, but no, everyone was shiny and hammered and not even thinking about pens. Idiots. Stationery is a fail-safe present for friends and family to buy me. My husband has even learned what the optimum notepad is like. Soft cover, lined and not too thick as I never fill them because I get too excited to start a new one. A new notepad marks a new start. Anything could happen between these pages. It's a Monday morning, a 1st of January, a first date or a day one of a new job. And for me, it is my job. I'm a lot less computer savvy than my spectacles and social awkwardness at parties would have you assume. I downloaded two Louis K specials and one by Maria Bamford and then couldn't find them on my laptop. Never found them, no clue. <laughs> That's a dated reference. <laughs> and also, the <laughs> the Maria Bamford one I'm quite like to find. Not so bothered about the others. My stand-up shows are entirely written in a collection of sc scrappy notebooks. I don't trust computers. They're full of... Uh, they're all full of excuses. Oh, sorry, your work disappeared, but your iCloud was damp. I think you wanted a blank page saving. I'm an arsehole and I hate you. My notebooks are like someone you know rubbing your back. It's okay. I'm still in your handbag, on your bedside table, in your car. Here, have a clean page for all those new cock jokes. And breathe out. And the how to be champion tip at the end of that chapter is late August, early September is a great time for buying stationery as all the new back to school ranges are in the shops. You are welcome. The next chapter is called Who Do You Think You Are? My family has always been proud and supportive of my unusual career choice. Indeed, they were proud and supportive when I got my first job at WH Smith and sold Shields Gazettes in a nylon skirt, when I wrote for the local free paper for free, when I sold all of my Cindy dolls via the boards at Asda, and when I left a perfectly good civil service job to tell jokes to strangers for money. So when my parents said there was one programme they'd love me to do, I was all ears. Ears that were nervous of family fortunes, I'm a celebrity or Jeremy Kyle, but listening nonetheless. I suppose the latter does uncover new family members just the same, but at least with who do you think you are, the family members are all dead. Uh, I only ever had my mum and dad's, oh sorry, I only ever had my mum's dad and my dad's mum growing up and I didn't know much about the family tree beyond that. My nana introduced me to crinkle cut chips. Rumour had it she crinkled her own. She also pickled her own onions but used normal sized onions so you'd get a jar with three in like a tube of tennis balls. 
She also made bilberry pie and let me pick her sweet peas. I have in recent months started making pies and last year I finally got sweet peas to grow and flower. I love the smell of them so much. My nana also had the biggest boobs on anyone I'd ever seen. And she let me tear her yellow pages up, which was, which was much less impressive than when strong men do it. There's a photo of me just taking a page out at a time while Nicholas on her living room floor. And that is the end of episode 70. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, tell me underneath uh, a thing that you loved about a grandparent. Let's do that. Uh, and if you didn't have any grandparents, I'm very sorry. Maybe there was somebody who was that role to you. Tell me what you loved about them. Uh, I enjoy reading those. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope I made you smile. I hope you have a good rest of the day. Take care of yourselves. Lots of love. Uh, and stay in the house. Wash your fucking hands. And I'll see you tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Hello, it's Sarah Milliken here. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. Don't forget to like, pop a comment below and why not stick around to watch a few more. I'm sure those emails or those dishes can wait a bit longer.